Greetings the internet, this is Ninark, and welcome to my brand new tutorial series on making a top-down Pokemon style RPG uh, where we're going to be learning like grid-based movement, uh, random encounters, an inventory system, some turn-based battling, you know, all the classics. Uh, so, yeah, actually, uh, let's get right into it. Um, this is going to be an intermediate-ish tutorial. I'll explain everything still, but I expect you guys to kind of know what's going on. If you don't, maybe go back to my platforming series and you might learn a little bit more. Uh, anyway, let's get right to the action. So I'm going to go to File. We're going to create a new project. We're going to call it Parcel Creatures so we don't get sued. Spelled that correctly. All right, um, I want to change my window size to 384 by 288 and this is uh, for grid sake you can make it whatever size you want honestly um, this just fits the grid really well and you know similar almost for three kind of like how Pokemon is anyway I'll stop rambling we want to uh, make our uh, this is fine full screen scaling we can change the low quality we don't need this we don't need a high DPI display that doesn't matter. Sampling, we want it to be point, so our pixels stay clean. If you're using vector art or anything, you might want to use linear, but since we're using pixel art in this tutorial, we want it to be point. This can be low quality, and loader style doesn't matter, but I'm going to change it to progress bar only. Yeah, uh, so there we go. We have our, our uh, scene ready to go, so let's get started. Now first, I want to go over to view up here. If you're on home, go to view, snap to grid, and show grid, turn those on. It's already at 32 by 32, and that's uh, what I want. And as you can see, it fits nicely, uh, all these nice little blocks in this nice little screen size. Uh, you can make it whatever size you want. Um, just make sure that it's a perfect square, your grid size, and you can adjust anything accordingly. All right, so the first thing we want to do is right click, and we're going to insert a new object. It's going to be a sprite. Click it down. I'm going to resize this to 32 by 32 so it's the same as our grid size let's fill this in with a color let's make it like this kind of pinkish red color and exit out now you'll see that instead of being in the grid he's actually on the corners of the grid and that's not what we want we want him to be right on the grid sizes and this is because if you open him up in the sprite editor go over here to the left on the bottom it says set origin and image points click on that it'll bring up this thing click on origin quick assign top left and if we exit out of here you'll see he fits nicely in the squares so that's what we want cool all right so we have that done now uh, what we want to do is set up a couple instance variables and we'll do this real quick so first thing we first we go on and uh, make an instance variable that is dir for direction and then we'll leave it at zero make sure it's a number we want to add one more and if you don't know how to add instance variables make sure that you have your uh, character collected collected you want them to be selected which is a different word and then go over here to instance variables and add edit instance variables so, right, so we have dir and we need step timer and this is going to also be a number and then we need one more that is going to be speed and we're going to make that a number as well and we'll come back to these in just a second so uh, this is pretty much set up we want to add one more object so right click insert new object and we want to use the keyboard object as input now you can use a gamepad if you know how to do that maybe I'll do a tutorial on using that but for now we're just going to be using a keyboard uh, just to keep things simple so double click on that and now we are allowed to use a keyboard in our game um, I'm going to change the name of our sprite to player so but let's uh, call him player if I could spell then maybe we could and yeah that's good for right now we'll organize everything uh, in one of the upcoming videos maybe when we start doing uh, the sprites and things alright so let's actually just get this going so we first we want to do is add a global variable now this could be an instance variable for your player but I just like that it's a global variable it's a really a preference it doesn't really matter um, but it kind of matters if your player is not actually on the screen but that might not we're gonna call it grid size and we're going to make the initial value we want it to be of the size of our grid and in this case it's 32 so cool we have all that going and yeah that's great so the first thing we want to do is start right away on uh, a couple little uh, starter things so let's right click add an event we're going to go to keyboard on key pressed and we're going to use the right arrow key. Now I'll explain 
what all this means in a second. So what we want to do is we want to set our direction, set value, direction to zero. Now in construct, uh, the direction, the angle is zero in a regular 360 degree turn, uh, as you would do in maybe some sort of skateboarding event. Um, in construct, zero is to the right, 90 is to the bottom, 180 is to the left, and 270 is to the top. So it's a circle but rotated to the right, in case you were wondering. Uh, so yeah, so when we're pressing the right, it's going to the right as you do. Now let's set another uh, value. We want to set our step timer to be our grid size. And if you start typing in grid size, you'll see the little globe there and it says grid size next to it, and we can just press enter and it'll fill it out for us so that we know we actually have the right uh, thing happening. Cool. Um, so then we wanna add one more uh, condition. We wanna do our condition to be, uh, is our direction, uh, or sorry, our step timer equal to zero. Uh, so this means that if our, our uh, we're totally stopped when our step timer reaches zero. That means that we have made it all the way to the next grid. So when it's totally stopped, then it can check again if there's a new key being pressed or what have you. All right, so let's copy this, paste it three more times. We want to change this to down. We'll go in a clockwise. This is not the thing I wanted to modify. So change the direction to 90. We're gonna click on this, go left. And we're gonna change this direction to 180. And we're going to go this and press up and we want to set our direction to 270. Cool. All right, so this does absolutely nothing because we're not telling our character to actually do anything. Uh, we're just giving it the uh, direction that it wants to go and how far away is the next grid. So let's add an event. We're going to go to uh, player, compare instance variables. If our step timer is greater than zero, so if it's 32 or 30 or 28 or 27, depending on how long your speed is, it's gonna be two in this case, and we'll go to that in a second. Let's actually do that right now. So make sure, uh, go down to your, over here where your project is. This might be different for you, I'm not sure. Um, I've changed this quite a bit, I think. But uh, under project, you'll have your player, and sometimes it's up here, you can click it the same way. And we want to set our speed to a number that is divisible by our grid size. So if you have 100, maybe you do 25 steps, or if you're doing 32, in this case, I'm gonna use two just so he kind of goes kind of slow so we can see him traverse the uh, you know land in the way that he does very slowly. So you can make it four or eight. Can you do eight? I don't wanna do the math. You can figure that out. For now, we'll just do two. All right, so if our step timer is greater than zero, what, what do we wanna do? We wanna move our character in the direction that we pressed. So we're going to take our player, we're going to uh, go down, to size and position, and we want to move at angle. So our angle is going to be player, and then in order to reference our variable, we do uh, dot syntax, so you press the dot after the player, and now we can access our player uh, variable, which is dir, and that is our direction, and that's the angle that we're moving at, and our distance we want to do to player, let's use the dot again to get his speed, or her speed, Right, so you'll see when we do this that our player will just move forever in the direction that you pressed. and Nothing happens. Why? Because our step timer isn't going down. It's just, oh, it's 32 now? Okay, well, it's greater than zero, so we're just going to keep moving our player that direction. Uh, nope, still greater than zero, yep, and it's going to do that forever uh, until it loops around the earth and comes back on the other side, probably with some trinkets that his friends and family will throw away. So what we want to do is go to our player and we're going to subtract from our step timer. And we want to subtract our player dot speed. Now you can insert these variables by hand, but it's much easier to reference your player variable variables in all these cases so that you can just change it in one place if you want them maybe to go faster or slower, depending. Right, so, uh, so we're gonna subtract our step timer. So now you'll see when we press right, he will move a whole grid to the right and a grid to the left and etc. But if you hold down the key, he just stops. And that's kind of boring. We don't want you to have to mash the key to continue moving. So let's fix that. So uh, we're going to add a new event. We're going to go to player, 
uh, compare instance variable, and if step timer is equal to zero, right, we want to right click and add a new sub event. Now you can just press S if you want to do this, so click on this. It's more fun sometimes. So we're going to go back to the keyboard and we want to go to key is down. So it's going to check after once it reaches zero, is there another, is there a key still down or another key down that we want to uh, check. So key is down and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. So our right arrow is down, then we want to do these two things. So if we go to our right arrow up here, it's going to be the same things. We want to set the direction to zero and set it to the grid size again. That way, okay, you stop moving. Now what? Are the right arrow is down? Okay. Well, continue to go to the right and go a whole nother grid size to the right until it comes back around. So we can copy this and paste it three more times. Do the down arrow. Set this to 90. Do the left arrow. Set this to 180. And we're going to set the up arrow. We're going to set our direction to 2. 70. And now, if we press play, you'll see when you hold down the key, he continues to move that direction. Now it's skipping a little bit for me, but that's just because I'm recording a video and running an operating system in an operating system. And yeah, so there's a little bit of lag, but it should be really smooth and clean uh, on a normal, in a normal situation. So as you can see, he fits right on the grid. He moves around exactly the amount of the grid size, and it's beautiful and amazing and perfect and we used very few variables, which I like. Cool, all right, so uh, that's actually basically all we're doing today. Uh, just wanted to get that out of the way. Now, if you've watched my most recent tutorial on uh, better four directional movement, we're actually going to integrate that into this so that it's a little bit cleaner um, movement uh, and it'll just feel a little bit better, but this is the basics, this works, and um, yeah, so I hope you uh, enjoyed and please like and subscribe or you know share this video send me a check it doesn't matter uh, what you do but I hope uh, that you have learned a lot and that's what really matters so uh, yeah, good luck everyone and I'll see you in the next video just relax and breathe.